Okay, guys. Um, I've just recorded the lap guide for Suzuka, and that is um, to show you how to do laps around Suzuka in the Thor series um, and making the tyres last a good 10 minutes. The, if you drive, if you take on board the, what I said on that video, it will help. Um, but I've decided to do another video where we don't have to worry about tyres because we want to look at quali pace because there is a difference between what I can do in quali and what I'll do in a race. Um, I will not be able to get anywhere near what I could do in qualifying um, in the race. So some people may wonder, well, what am I doing differently? So that's the only reason I'm going to do this video. I'm not going to do this for every track. Basically, what I show here and the difference to the um the lap guide one um you should be able to see and hopefully work out for yourselves all oh, right okay so he's lifting there to look after his tires but in qualifying he doesn't need to lift and so on right so this is where i hope i can actually get the lap in now one key thing for qualifying hot lap is don't kill your tyres on the outlap. Also, don't go too slow. You need temperature, but you don't want lots of temperature. And you don't want lots of wear. So I'm going to take you a little easier through the knuckles here. I'm not going to go anywhere near the speed I can go through the Degners. Because if I do, I'll hurt the tyres. Now one thing I do try and do whenever I'm doing an hour lap is work on car positioning. So try and position the car in the places I want it to be. You see we've got a little slither of red on the tyres already. The slower you go in a straight, the colder the tyres will get. So if you are behind traffic in qualifying, slowing down and waiting loads here is not going to help the tyres much. You're better off doing it much earlier in the lap if you can. Okay, I'll give you a cheeky tip here. We're starting a qualifying lap. We're going to one third gear. But use the outside of the road here. Give yourself more track to get to a higher speed. Okay, turn one, we're going to go into it flat out. And on the power nice and early. And we're going to stay flat out. using a bit more steering angle than we would for the race laps. Oh, dip to wheel. Okay, now this is where we have to be brave. So I've lost time there from dipping a wheel. Notice I didn't go full throttle until my steering was straight. Also, second gear for the hairpin. Now, what you'll hopefully notice is that I'm braking at about the same points as I would for the race pace, but then I'm more aggressive with my steering and with my um, when I get back on the power. You break to 100 for the quali lap. And we take the tight line to the line for the short run. I'll do another lap. Now, it'll be difficult to get two laps with a decent lap time. So 
So braking at the end of the kerb on the right is a touch too late, so have to do it a little earlier. Bit too much kerb there. Don't get greedy in this corner. Comfortably flat out up the hill. If you steer too much though, it'll understeer wide. Be brave. running wide there because we're not braking late and a tight run to the line and there we go Now, I did go a little bit quicker on that second lap, but that's because I did make mistakes on that first lap. But the difference in how I drive those a qualifying lap is easy to see compared to um, the race lap. And this might be why some people kill their tyres in the race. Because if they are applying the same amount of steering angle that they would use for qualifying, they'll kill the tyres, they'll get understeer. Um, it would be okay for one lap, but then it would understeer. The final chicane, for example, I've been able to break at 100 metres, but I can't do that for a stint length. The tyres won't do it, I'll end up going deep. Um, so that's why I bring the braking points earlier. Turn one, you'll notice I went flat out into the corner, but even I noticed, right, I couldn't brake at the end of the kerb on the right-hand side. I had to brake before it. That allowed me a bit of straight line or straighter line to be on the brakes to still make turn two. Compare that corner to um, the race stint uh, lap. Obviously, I'll lift off much earlier turn in less pressure on the tires less steering angle less damage to the tires and comfortably making the corners which allows me to go faster or put decent lap times in for a longer period of time the key to turn one and two as well is if you are not getting to the apex curb of turn two you are going too fast through turn one okay or braking too late for turn two you will lose so much time then um through the knuckles as well obviously turn three the first part of the knuckles i am absolutely flat out in qualifying i could do that on race pace for one or two laps and then my tires are going to be dead and this is the thing the accumulation of trying to go flat out into one flat out into three flat out uh, through dunlop flat out in into the degners will kill your tires so quickly if you do that in race pace so yeah so first part of the knuckles flat out the system then of when i'm lifting and when i'm on the power is the same as um the lap guide but the amount of steering angle i'm using is a lot more i'm being much more aggressive with it okay and i'm trying to get on the power a bit sooner for a bit longer um, but again the process is the same of that final right hander before Dunlop um, the left hander up the hill we have to sacrifice that exit so we have to go slower through that corner so that we can be flat out through Dunlop and not run wide again Degna the difference between Degna 1 and 2 on this video compared to the lap guide video is huge on the lap guide video i'm lifting off i'm turning in i'm back on the power i'm then on the brakes and we take the corner in third gear nice smooth doesn't hurt the tires and that rhythm works for me um in qualifying though i can take that first degna absolutely flat out but again if we do that in the race we're gonna struggle okay we're gonna get to a point where the tires aren't gonna make it but also 
I use the 50 meter marker board as my turn in point in the race that won't be there for very long so be careful of that now on the qualifying lap I am flat out through the first Degna which means I don't have to get back on the power so I'm going flat out through the first Degna and then I'm on the brakes for the second Degna now I'm on the brakes quite aggressive but that's because we're going a little faster we need to get the speed down to comfortably take it in third gear and you'll notice again I had no problem making the apex curve and that's the key um, heading to the hairpin braking at the same point again if we're going that little bit faster at that point of the qualifying lap don't brake later it will not help you you're better off getting it slowed down in a straight line getting off those brakes and working on feeding off your steering nice and early so you can get on the power nice and early and it's the same with spoon the difference between this lap and the uh, stint laps um, through spoon was only how much throttle I used between the corners I didn't stay on the throttle later I just got on the throttle earlier on the exit of the first part of spoon or should I say in the middle of spoon breaking at the same point a very small amount down to fourth gear getting it turned in and then very early on the power so that i can then get off the power dab that brake and turn in at the right point to make the apex of the second part of the spoon and there's no point trying to go faster into the second part of spoon it doesn't work you'll only run wide or scrub your tires and lose time so we can go a bit faster on the exit of the first part of Spoon, but get the car slowed down nice and early for the second part. Then you'll be able to get on the power nice and early, and that's where you can then really gain. You can get on the power early, you can get up to fourth gear nice and early, you can get off the steering nice and early, and we can carry that speed all the way down the straight to the uh, R130. Again, you don't need lots of steering angle for the R130, um, and then braking for the chicane we can push it because it's a quali lap we're only going to be doing one on the tyres really I would not would do that do an out lap hot lap back to the pits out lap hot lap might as well do it that way um, so braking a 100 metres for the chicane still second gear for the first part third gear for the second part you may wonder why second gear allows you to use the engine braking to help get the car slowed down and have the turn in for the first part of the chicane also it means we can give it a decent blip of the throttle between the two corners then upshift to third before we turn into the left hander once we've started turning in we can try and get on the power as early as possible and because we're in third gear it'll be more stable than if you're in second gear and then hopefully you can get off that steering nice and early if you find you're going sideways and all over the place in that chicane it may be because you're doing the second part of the chicane in second gear okay hopefully this has been of use to you uh, good luck everybody um and uh, yeah let me know if it helps. Have a good one. Uh, see you all again soon.